Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. It's June 26th, and this is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Grant Dewey and Brian Babler from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Uh, thank you for being here, gentlemen. Uh, Grant, let's start with you and talk about action in the market or lack thereof uh, from the interest rate perspective. Not a lot of movement. What, uh, what kind of activity did you see? That's exactly right, uh, Mike. Um, June was kind of a catch-up month for sectors that have been most impacted by COVID-19. So you know, while high-grade munis were mostly unchanged, we did see pretty significant rally um, in names like, you know, New York MTA, which rallied about 60 to 70 basis points over the month. So, um, you know, back to levels that we haven't seen on MTA since uh, early to mid-March. Um, <clears throat> we also, in the new issuance, I know Brian will cover this, but uh, new deals included, you know, airline debt, uh, higher ed, triple B healthcare, all of which performed well during the month. Brian, so uh, this week in the, uh, in the market overall, it was a, another strong week for volume, another strong week for BAM. What uh, kind of activity did you see? Yeah, we, uh, you know, uh, the market slowed down a little bit relative to the last three or four weeks, but still pretty robust. Uh, total new issue supply was a little over $9 billion. Uh, you had about $7.8 billion on the negotiated front and a little over a billion competitive. Uh, we saw a continuation of taxables comprising about 35% of that supply or so. Uh, the interesting part about this week's supply, um, you know, along the same lines of uh, Grant's comments were, uh, you know, uh, it was pretty heavily dominated uh, by uh, by Mass Geo and then a lot of uh, Texas ISD paper. There was a little over a billion three of that that came to market. And then from there, it was scattered all over the place. So, um, you know, very, uh, very diverse in terms of sectors and ratings um, across the board. Um, BAM had a very active week, uh, and again, same theme of diversity. We, we priced over 30 deals in 10 states across all sorts of different sectors and up and down the rating spectrum in the uh, investment grade space from triple B to double A minus. Um, one of the highlight deals for us this week was $102 million for Birmingham Airport, uh, which was priced by Piper. That was one of the uh, first more regional, um, you know, non-hub kind, of, uh, kind of airports that came to market. And it was the first one priced with insurance. So uh, feedback on that was uh, was that the deal was very well subscribed for, um, you know, very good subscription, lots of uh, real money accounts um, and really good interest. They were able to lower yields on that deal by anywhere from 12 to 15 basis points uh, in pretty much most of the curve. So, uh, so really strong results there. Uh, away from that, um, Citigroup used us on a competitive sale for Deptford Board of Ed in New Jersey. That was a double A minus rated deal. Uh, and then BAML uh, priced uh, one of the University of Illinois uh, competitive transactions with BAM. Uh, they used us on the on the taxable series, uh, about 31 million, uh, and that's A1, A minus rated. So across the board, um, you know, really, uh, really strong, uh, really strong week. Brian's recap is a great one, and and there was a Bloomberg News article this week which talked about kind of the <clears throat> uh, increased uh, penetration for bond insurance, and and it was a focus uh, uh, focus article. They talked about since early May, uh, about 10% of uh, new issue bond sales uh, have been offered with insurance, which is nearly double uh, the average <clears throat> since 2012. So uh, last time we saw the market with back-to-back -back months of double-digit penetration. It uh, goes back to the financial crisis in 2009. It's just another piece of what you mentioned earlier that, you know, while we often take a look at performance of the market based on these AAA benchmark curves, there can be a lot more going on in the credit, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the credits, uh, yeah, there can be a lot more going on on the credit spread side. And so that's uh, one of the part of insurance penetration. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, in the secondary, just quickly, uh, you know, we had another solid week, um, 23 trades over, uh, well over 60 million in, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, well over 60 million in par. And we've been commenting pretty consistently uh, on the high demand for ins uh, BAM insurance from investors uh, seeking to hedge uh, some of the, uh, hedge portfolios against really, you know, I would say as much rating downgrades as anything else. So, um, so we continue to, we continue to see that well after the market has kind of uh, uh, adjusted a bit back to March levels. Great. So we're going into a short week next week. The, the 4th of July holiday we observed on the 3rd, which is Friday. Uh, I know the market's got an early close advice for Tuesday, or for Thursday rather. Um, what uh, kind of volume, what kind of activity do you expect to see? 
Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see a, a bit of a slowdown next week uh, with the shortened week uh, and kind of leading into the real uh, core summer months. Uh, probably total supply should end up uh, a little shy of six billion or so. Uh, most of that on the negotiated side, the competitive market really slows down next week. Um, and uh, it will be a little bit chunkier. There's a couple of large um, high grade issues uh, that, that comprise a, a decent percentage of the supply. Um, so overall volume will be down a little bit next week. Hey, Brian, we've seen uh, almost 40 billion in new issuance this month. Do you think the backlog of deals is mostly kind of cleared out or? Yeah, there's, there's probably, I would say, at least still in the range of one to two billion. Um, you know, what uh, what underwriters are, are leaving on the public calendar versus just shelving, uh, you know, more permanently to the fall uh, is a little bit of a of a moving target, but there's right. still probably about a billion or so that's listed uh, in kind of the day-to-day -day realm, and there's probably some more of that behind it. So, you know, call it that we, we've chewed through uh, a pretty healthy amount of, of the backlog that, you know, goes back to uh, March and April um, at this point, but there's still there's still some pretty decent supply um, that, that could potentially hit the market, particularly some of these uh, taxable refundings as taxable spreads continue to compress and uh, and make sense on a on a savings basis. So, uh, you know, estimates are probably anywhere uh, low end of a billion and high end, you know, maybe as much as three, but it's probably somewhere in that one to two and a half billion camp. And it was interesting to see on Bloomberg this morning, Joe Mysack uh, voiced his opinion that we may be heading back towards a $400 billion uh, total volume uh, for the year in the market, which uh, certainly would be a surprise to people who lived through April. So, uh, we'll yeah, I think I was reading Vikram Rai at City. I think is calling, he's sticking to his initial estimate of $440 billion for the year. So, uh, <clears throat> and in June, we ran at that run rate, but, uh, uh, but there remains to be seen. Very good. Well, we'll see you in July, and uh, we'll see how uh, things pick up. Thanks, gentlemen, for your time. Great. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of volatility and illiquidity, BAM-insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, including natural disasters, financial fraud, pension issues, and economic disruption, like the one we're experiencing right now. BAM. Build America Mutual. Ask your broker about BAM-insured municipal bonds.